Nice. Always happy to be back with you folks. Uh, let us know where you're from in the chat, what country you're from. If you're from a country outside the U.S., what's your uh, what's your visa requirements looking like right now? Do you uh, accept visitors from the U.S.? Let us all know. Um, we got Jay, folks. Jay's back. Our, uh, our chief computation layer correspondent is uh, back from the land of computation layer to uh, offer some insights. First of all, I just want to share some stuff that's really blown my hair back um, this last week. Share it with you folks. This might not look like much. It's like, oh, it's a it's a version of a Desmos graph. Only it's uh like I don't know, it's smaller, less dynamic. I don't know. Um, but what is going on here, Jay? You see, you, you see this one uh, in, in the Facebook group. What's happening here? This one was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, That's a trip. I couldn't figure it all out myself, but I played with some sliders, and it was really neat to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here goes. Let's do let's do a slider. This is the first time I realized, I realized that dimensions can come in like non-integer, not not in like in like uh, real numbers. Like this is in the two and a half dimension, I guess. Um, but this moves out like that and you got this right here and this thing's moving around. That's pretty slick, real smooth. Dig that, you can go down here and, and uh, load up a different function. Whoa, what's happening? Whoa, what's happening? Isn't that a trip? That's just going on just like that. Uh, sign X, Y, yeah. Anyway, saw this, thought it was awesome. Wanted to share with you folks. This was a uh, courtesy of, who was this? Robert Banks the Fourth. Do not know this person. Very much want to know this person. Uh, this is a uh, this is a quarantine project right here. What has your quarantine project been? Mine has been wrapping up um, seasons of way too many TV shows. Uh, meanwhile, Robert Banks the Fourth is creating this amazing 3D visualizer. Uh, I don't feel bad about that at all. I, um, is, who is this person? Do you know uh, this this person's uh, backstory? Jay, teacher, uh, teacher supporter. Um, I, I've I've just seen him on the on the Facebook group posting some pretty uh, some pretty crazy graphs recently. Get on the Facebook group, some cool stuff there. And uh, Robert Banks, if you're uh, on the call, uh, tell us your story. Uh, drop it in the chat if you know Robert Banks. Uh, say what's up to him for us. Awesome stuff. Um, this happened. This right here happened just ten minutes ago. Um, part of my job at Desmos is to see what's working and not working, or could be improved um, with our curriculum and our assessments. And um, it's it's a blast. If you are a like a, a data nerd and a student thinking nerd, like I am, I am both categories of nerds. Um, this right here is such a fun treat where I get to go into the database and anonymize and grab like a, a thousand student answers to this question and see what's going on. Um, right here, do you folks? I love this question, number one, um, because you can answer it without a whole lot of um, computational precision. It's more like, okay, uh, Farah um, drank three liters, Rebecca drank less, and Valeria drank twice as much as Rebecca. So if Rebecca drinks more than half of Farah, then Valeria is gonna drink more than Farah as well. I think this is right. Um, this right here, is that right? Jay, check me. Rebecca, Farah, Valeria. You were just watching me talk. From least me talk. to most. Uh, yeah, no, I, th I think that's it. Rebecca. Yeah, so here's the thing, though. This is the trip, yeah. okay? Is that um, what percent, Jay, what percent of students do you think gave the exact opposite answer? Valeria, Farah, Rebecca. I would say between 20 and 30. And more to the point, like, should we worry if that percentage is between 20 and 30? The, the answer is 12%, which worries me. Um, that 12% of students gave the exact reverse of the answer, of the correct answer. And I, I got to dig into some of their, their thoughts that they gave here. And 100% of the small sample I took, a couple people, gave the correct reasoning for the other answer, uh, for the right answer. But they gave the reverse of the right answer. All of which kind of leads me to wonder if our user interface here that has like greatest down at the bottom maybe, and it's a little bit, a little bit lighter text, if that's uh, not doing students any favors as they're trying to express their brilliance into our platform right there. And that to me is what's super fun about our project at Desmos. One of the many things is that we are by no means perfect. Um, we're, we're struggling to get it even partially right every day. But what we are is we, uh, we have incredibly smart mechanisms for getting better. And so we, we go through every question, every lesson, every assessment and go and grab you know, hundreds of student responses and see like, so what is the most common wrong answer here? Is this interesting? Are, are we getting a lot of d diversity of, of thought and responses here? Um, more on that later, a process that I call deep diving. Um, but if that sounds exciting to you, getting a curriculum like that, that a curriculum that gets smarter every single day, by all means, learn.dems.com slash curriculum. We are opening uh, the application window shortly. So click that apply for 2122 button. Tell them Desmos Live, Dan and Jay sent you. Um, that's gonna be, be a lot of fun for your, uh, your middle school. 
teachers and students next year. Other cool things I saw. Uh, this was uh, before the new year, but I can't believe I didn't mention this before now. You see this, Jay? Uh, this uh, Aniola here, she uh, printed out those snowflakes. Like, I thought it was cool that people were making snowflakes uh, before uh, break, but then this teacher goes and like prints them all out onto magnets for her students. <laughs> I just like, I mean, it's just raising the bar. I just like not playing fair. You know, everyone's, everyone's feeling bad about that. Not, not really, people, this is uh, like 600 likes. How'd you do it? Uh, she gives the, uh, the explanations. I dig that, but to me, it's, it's part, of the, part of the theme of turning student thought into something meaningful, like con communicating to them through loads of ways with tech without, with physical materials without, um, but that your thoughts, your ideas, your energy matters here in math class. I dig that. Uh, we got Jay to come on in a second and share with us one way to do that, to communicate to students, hey, your thinking matters a lot here. I love that. And uh, I wanted to share a couple more items before we do. Check it out. Um, someone else who's new to me, this is a, a grad student in math education at UGA, which is a really fantastic program. Hope to hear more from Halil um, in the future. Um, offered uh, based on a previous uh J. Chow, John Rowe, joint uh, on computational layer. This really slick activity where you move around a crow and this point is connected to your crow. And I don't know about you, like I don't know about you. Maybe this is a, a personal defect in myself, but I cannot help but wonder what is the connection? How is my crow powering that red point? Just really dig that. Um, and that, that's, that is a couple lines of computational layer code right there. It, there's a, a slick. And so I offered a, an explanation about how to do that. And then Lola Morales, who is also someone who's new to me and extremely cool out there in Espana, um, gave this, this one right here, a, a localized version of this, where Harry Potter is cruising around Spain. Does anyone in the chat, or Jay, or both, notice how this one is different from Halil's? I think it's, I think it's different in a very crucial, very interesting way that, you know, that you know if you've been around, if you've been trying to make these things, you, you, you kind of get what's going on. It's not just that it's Harry Potter, different continent, different place, different language, but they both made a very different design choice. I think matters quite a bit. Okay, okay, did something there. What do you, what do you notice, Jay? Or, Ooh, was different. What, what was that? What, what is that you just did? Um, but the, the part where I'm stuck and confused is the, the axes aren't labeled, so. So I can't figure out <laughs> where, where, if this is a centering activity, where the, the center is. Uh, right, I also can't right. read the screen. So the, that, yeah, that's, that may that's be, totally that fair. That's totally fair. Too. <laughs> yeah, there may be some of that going on. Uh, Jay and I talked before the show about uh, his, his and my Spanish language experience. We both share in common that we uh, were the film crew on our classmates' uh, Spanish language uh, summative assessment videos, which uh, for me, it made me a lifelong fan of the, the, the film arts, uh, the cinematic, um, and for Jay, I, I did d different things. We're both here though. Yeah. But check it out. Yeah, I, I love this. Uh, Jay called it out like the axes are labeled here, which does one thing to my brain, and the axes are not labeled here, which does a very different thing to my brain. And for me here, I'm, I'm sweatier here. I don't know if this is fair to say. I feel sweatier here. I think, Jay, maybe the opposite was true for you. You felt sweatier here. But for me, this feels like, okay, like I don't need to know what the significance is of the axis labels. I can actually, in fact, like imagine for myself, what are the axis labels? And this one turns out to be a uh, distance from Bilbao. And then the Y axis I can play around is distance from Malaga. Hey, but it's like, what are the axis labels? That's a powerful question. I love what they did here. So uh, wrapping this up here, just a little show and tell about what's going on. Um, uh, is this, this right here, I just love this, this uh, exchange came through the Desmos Twitter feed. Someone's asking, I wanna create a, a very basic true false activity in Desmos uh, Builder. Um, how do I auto market true or false? And this person says, well, um, you can mark as correct the true or false option right here. Um, but you know, real heads know out there that that's not gonna, sh it's not gonna do what Laura wants it to do, which is share true or false, share right or wrong. Um, with the student, which I don't know. There's people, I, I'm reading the, uh, the the Nearpod and the Pear Deck um, groups as they're like trying to, we're all trying to figure out like what platform is right for me right now. There's no right answer to this, but people are sometimes very confused by like, okay, so the teacher marks which option is correct and the student doesn't see it. And it feels almost antagonistic of, of the Desmos, of all of us at Desmos to have not offered that um, to students. But this person down here, 
Mrs. D, uh, I just thought this was really helpful right here. It's worth thinking about if you want the student to know they have the correct answer or not. This person's been thinking a bit after a colleague uh, offered some thoughts. Uh, a, colleagues are great for that. Um, and B, like this is a, a really fantastic thing to think about. Do you want students to know if they have the correct answer or not? And I just, I wanna echo that question and to note that the goal of feedback according to Dylan Willem is to cause more thinking. And on a personal level, I want to attach meaning to student thoughts so that students learn about math from that meeting and also learn about themselves, that their thoughts have a lot of value. And learning you're right or wrong attaches a certain kind of meaning and causes a certain kind of thinking. It also attaches a certain kind of value to students. I think we should all reflect a lot about. And uh, when you, if I tell a student they're right, odds are good they just move along. Even if there's more for them to think about, if I tell them they're wrong um, on a true or false exam, like they can just you know, what are they thinking about? They just move over to the, the other option on true false. And so I'd love to uh, think with Jay a bit and with you all, um, what is it that we can offer students in response to their uh, their thinking? What kinds of, uh, especially in a text, the, the, the text note component, uh, Jay, you're up here on your screen share. Yep. All right. um, yep. No, I just just dropped you, dropped it, that that on you there. Um, Jay's going to offer you folks um, some ideas about how you can use the note component and create dynamic notes that attach meaning to student thinking and cause more thinking. Additionally, so uh, give Jay uh, you know a hearty uh, uh, applause in the uh, in the comments. I can't even keep track of how many times Jay's offered to spend his time with uh, with all of us here. So thanks a lot, Jay, and let's uh, let's chat about it. What do you got for us? Sure. Um, yeah. So I have like a really simple setup here with just a graph and a note. Um, I'll open up the graph real quick. Uh, I added some CL. I was typing some CL. I was midline uh, when when I came over. So we're not just not going to edit that one. But uh, it's just a, a circle. Um, you know, in, in standard form, you have three variables, H, K, and R. Uh, and you can kind of drag this circle around. Uh, and the, the note's asking students to, to move it to a location so that it creates uh, the correct uh, equation. So the circle matches that equation x minus three squared. That should be a y, y plus six squared uh, equals 16. Get it, uh, go change it. Me on that one. Yeah, let's, let's just one. change it. Um, yeah, so uh, notes are, are really great because uh, as you can see, we can we can edit uh, an equation really easily if I wanted to, to format text in here, I could do that uh, really, really easily. And um, we we're talking about the feedback that you could possibly give for this. And um, even if we're not, again, showing it, to each student, whether they're they're right or wrong, but you could use something like a uh, like an overlay uh, on the teacher dashboard to kind of show the grouping of students. And I kind of started in here typing the the correct answer or a, a correct sync in there, but uh, I didn't finish. So you you could give yourself an indication on the dashboard, um, and you could also uh, show you know where the the students are in, in a dashboard overlay. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's but, just pause uh, there real fast. Let's yeah. pause real quick. Yeah. So hit preview, would you? So yeah. I love this. Yeah, if you just if you just give students this, which is not far from a dynamic worksheet, there's so many options on the other side of the dashboard where, like one, you get information about um, you know the overlay of all the responses gives you gives you something to talk about with them. Even showing the students the overlay offers them something interesting to think about to cause more thinking. Um, you can give yourself a, a correctness indicator that is visible only to you, which is valuable for you. Um, and you can snapshot different like representative student responses and put those up for the class. All of these are options. And you can also like, you can also say you're right or you're wrong in the text right here. That's definitely possible to do. I just invite you folks to be a student in your head and think about what the different kinds of thinking each of those moves would cause for students. Cause it, it is different. It's not bad or good, but it is very different. Anyway, keep going, Jay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then I, I thought like, what if we wanted to give students a little more information? We don't want to tell them if they're they're right or they're wrong, um, but we could give them some really basic information like uh, the center of their circle is at a certain point and their, their radius is a certain size uh, at any given time. Um, so, you know, uh, add in a few lines, format this all nice, uh, add in some italics. And then uh, if I go in a preview here, uh, it would be great if, if the text that's on the screen uh, actually changes along I along do. with the, the moving nice. of the of the circle, um, so something we do in the past is we take this this whole bunch of text here. Um, you you could write it out yourself, but I'm just going to copy it for to save us some time. Uh, and then we'd open the the scripting window for the the note and uh, add a content sync. Uh, and in that content sync, I would go ahead and and paste in all the text. 
uh, and you can see here now. Uh, I'll just I'll just add some some letters here. Uh, when I preview, you can see now instead of pulling uh, the text from the note itself, it's pulling it from that content sync uh, in the in the note script. And you can see a few other things change. the The line spacing is a little different. The italics went away. Um, a few things. That's pretty. Yeah, lots of formatting here. Yeah, just to pause happen. real fast um, here. This is this is confusing yep. for less lesson developers at Desmos also. The idea that what you see in that note right now is not what will be displayed to the student. Because there is a script that has that content sync, whatever's in the content sync overrides whatever you see in that note right there. Uh, hit, hit done for me, would you, Jay? Um, yep. Well, anyway, yeah, the, the, the crowd gets it. This is, this is a high rank crowd right here. But that, that's been confusing for me, for all of us here. So, yeah, so what can we do with this to create more dynamic notes? Yeah. Um, so in, in these these three value, values here, uh, I have H, I have K, and I have R coming out of the graph. So I'm just going to uh, add in a, a dollar sign and then two uh, squiggly braces. And this is our way of bringing in a value from, from another component or from somewhere else. So uh, from my graph, uh, I named it graph. I probably shouldn't have named it graph. I shouldn't have named it uh, like graph one or something. Uh, I'm going to pull out uh, the number. Uh, what is this? This is H. Uh, and I can do the same thing for K and R. So uh, for K, I'll pull out. Oh, that's the wrong symbol. I can pull out. Uh, I can pull out the number K. Uh, and then here I can pull out the number R. Um, right. And I can see here. Uh, the center appears to be working. I formatted everything the way it should. Um, yep. And it's saying, you know, bring in bring in the value for uh, the H and the K, the, the vertical and the horizontal, well, set it backwards. Um, but then uh, here you can see it's, it's treating my radius as just plain text because I made an error. So I'll go back and I'll fix that. Uh, and I can see here I, I included the wrong symbol. Ooh, I also don't have a number R. Let me change that out. I bet it's a lowercase. There we go. Can we just pause here? Can you, can you uh, uh, yeah. yeah, show 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 what's up there. Drag it around um, so we see it works. But just like real fast, like sh share what's happening technologically and also pedagogically what's going on here. So a lot just happened. So uh, yep, everything's synced up right now. Let's uh, go back to the the computational layer script for us, and let's uh, let's make it all uh, large. Uh, hit that hit smash that zoom button for us. So what Jay's done right here, we'll take our chances. We'll take our chances. Um, is all of this is like uh, is text in there? And, but Jay said, hey, I wanna to go to the graph component, typed in graph. I wanna grab a property over there, the number property, type period number, and then I want the number that's attached to, uh, uh, that says H and then also K and then R. But if you don't use the, if you don't use the dollar sign schooly braces, we don't know that that's, um, that that is an, a, an actual dynamic variable. We think it's just like, you, you just want text. Like you just want the, it's like, yeah, press done there for us, would you? And then show us how that won't, that won't change at all here. Yeah, it's just going to show that. Would you hop into the graph real quick? If you showed it, I, I missed it because I was chatting with people in the chat. It was a big conversation brewing. Yeah, so there's H, K, and R in the graph. Those have got to be in there. Okay, that's tech. Hit that done for me, would you, Jay? Let's go preview again. And um, what I love about this, should we fix it first? Let's fix it first. Oh, let's fix it. Yep. Let's, get, let's get those, uh, those uh, <laughs> squiggly braces back. Uh huh. Wow, the chat is jumping off. Heavenier asked a question that got him going. I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So moving around, and what I just want to say as Jay moves the the circle around and tries to find um, the center and radius um, that we, that equation, we are sending information back to the student. And I I don't know if this information is valuable. I don't know if this is going to cause more thinking for the student. In a way, it's kind of challenging. Students got to say, okay, great. I know the center. I know the radius. What on earth does that have to do with the equation that I'm trying to create here? That's a possibility. Um, but I do know that this information is very different from saying to the student, you're right or you're wrong. It's giving them opportunities to try new things. And my wager is this, is that if the student found the center and radius that they liked, odds, I, I bet that more than zero students would try to move it around again and s just test their knowledge. Like, okay, I got this one right, but do I understand what's going on here? If I move down or up, what'll happen? And uh, that's, that is, I think, something that's lost if we say, you're right, because then we're moving on. 
That's just interesting to me. So um, this is not part of what we're talking about here today. Jay's, Jay shared with you the old way, the old way of doing business at Desmos, where we use the content sync and we dropped uh, variables into the content sync, creating that weird disconnect from what's in the note visible in the editor versus what's in that, that script. So Jay, share the really fantastic way that we, just so much clearer how we handle this nowadays. Yeah, no problem. Um... So let me just make a copy. Uh, and yeah, so one, one of the things that uh, you can see it here and uh, let's say if I wanted to change the question. So I go into here and I change the note um, by using the old content sync. If I change the question here in the editor, it, it doesn't update because I have the code uh, or the, the code coming in from, from CL uh, overriding everything that's been written in the note. Uh, so rather than define all of our text uh, in this in this content sync here, I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, in the the CL for any of our notes now, all we're going to do is we're going to identify the information that we need. So uh, I know that in my note, it done. Oh no! Give me a sec. Refreshing. My computer is not liking me. Um, I, I know I need uh, H, K, and R, right, to, to put into that, that section on the bottom. So I'm going to make, uh, make three variables. So I'm going to say uh, make a variable H, and I'm going to pull the same value from, from the graph that I did on the previous screen. So I'm going to say uh, from the graph, I want uh, number H, uh, and I'm going to do two more. So I'm going to change this to K and this to R. Uh, so now I have H, K, and R, and all I have to do is uh, take these values and then put them into the, the note. So this allows you to edit the, just the note as you would uh, without having to put it into the script, uh, figure out the LaTeX to, to make the equation look pretty. Uh, it allows you to keep all of your formatting. So if you want uh, italics, if I wanted to make this, this bold to I don't know, draw some attention to it or, or something, uh, I could just edit it as, as, it, uh, as it is now. Wait a second. Uh, and then wherever wait, wait, wait. I want to oh, press ahead, press pre press preview for me. I I, I just I might yeah. have I might have just dropped off for a second here. So if this doesn't work, right? If I drag this around, it not still yet. doesn't work. So like still okay H okay, and R. It, the H is not a special H, and the K is not a special K, and, and the R is not a special R. <laughs> but they are declared in the script as like special variables. Correct. Make, make we just haven't worse. told the. I'm yeah. With you. Um, Take it home. So here. Yeah, if I want uh, this H to be replaced with a special H, um, I'll, I'll delete it here. Uh, there's a button down here that says insert a value from computation layer. Sorry, it may be off the screen. Uh, and that, if you click that, now brings up a list of all those variables you made in, in CL. So I made uh, the variable H. So I want to insert that variable there, just like I did in inline in the content sync. I'm kind of doing it here, um, but separated. One part is in the, the script and one part is in the editor. Um, same thing for K, I can enter value K. Uh, or if I don't want to mm. go down and click, I can type uh, a dollar sign and one squiggly brace and it opens up the menu for me. Uh, and I can pull out R. And I have all this. Adjust it, change the size. Uh, if I want this also to be italicized, let's see if it lets me do it all in one. I can highlight it all. It's italicize everything just to and I have everything all formatted. Yeah, pretty. And something I, I realize is that if you like if you want to change the problem, it's easier now than if you had all that text dumped into the computation layer script. You just like change that plus four to a plus five, no big deal. Changes. There it is. Versus having to go into that script and finding it, changing it. I love it. Folks, yeah. um, <laughs> challenge for you folks. If you dig this, think of some ways you could do something interesting here and tweet at us at Desmos, Desmos Live, DB Meyer, Mr. Mr. Chow Math, whoever, just like one of us. And I'd love to feature them on our, our next Desmos Live. Some interesting ways of reflecting back to students uh, information about their thinking, attaching meaning to their thinking, just like this. Press preview and let's uh, dazzle them some more here, Jay. Um, and let us highlight it. How can we do this? Here's a, uh, Bob Lachelle offers us uh, this suggestion here. 
I want to build this, but make the circle change colors for hot, warm, cold based on their proximity to correctness. <laughs> I, Bob, I, I, I love your creativity, Bob. I want to attach some meaning to your thought here and share what it makes me think about, which is that students might just be thinking about colors, which is valuable, and not necessarily about the changing center and how it relates to the equation itself. That's, uh, that's me attaching some meaning to your thought there. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're right. I, I'm super interested in how this would work with students. Uh, we got someone uh, ring the bell, ring the gong. Uh, this is a, uh, Coach Balby's uh, first Desmos Live session. Welcome. Uh, another another uh, Desmos angel gets its wings. Um, and we'll publish uh, Jay's activity here and link the, some of these uh, links up in the show notes. Check those out later. Really interesting stuff. Jay, um, thank you so much for sharing that. Folks, If in, a, in the comments, if you want to um, know something, a, a question you have about computation layer, activity building, whatever else, please uh, please let us know in the comments. What you'd like to see Jay help you folks uh, learn to build. I do want to um, just come on through with uh, this question right here from Havanira, who is um, coming in from, I believe, the Desmos Discord. Um, Discord. It's, uh, it's like a, a house of Legos covered in super glue in which live bees. That's the, the best way I can explain what Discord is. Um, I know what Discord is and that's what it is. Um, but that question right there, I thought it was just uh, really fantastic. Um, one, one more time there, why do people gravitate towards textbook chalkboard math versus Desmos, whatever that means, you know, like the stuff that Jay is showing off, what we're trying to do here. And um, I don't know, J Jay, let's wrap it up with some, like, do, you have, do you have thoughts about that? Why people gravitate towards a certain kind of math that is more like, hey, here's how, here's how you do it. Here's how you find, here's how you graph a circle given that equation. I'll do two more for you. And now you're gonna do a bunch of those yourself. And I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Let's just call that, I don't know. I don't know what's in Heaven Ears friend's head there um, asking for a friend. Um, but let's just call that some, something like a, a traditional mode of instruction. So what's your thoughts about that, Jay? I think a lot of it comes from familiarity. Um, I'm sure if, if those teachers join us for a few uh, Desmos Live sessions, so they may uh, come on over to our side. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, a lot of the teachers I've worked with in the past, while I was in the classroom, that uh, were hesitant to, to go to computers was just a uh, a trust level with what's worked for them. Uh, and sure. I understand that. Yeah, it, uh, it winds up not being true, actually. Uh, later on in the comments, uh, Heaven Ear says, this person attended last week's live stream, but it was too, quote unquote, oh. simple. And so we, we did not, did not uh, convert anyone there uh, on that one. Yeah, I think, I think it, it is interesting how teaching is the sort of thing that we are, we, are, we are currently, like you all are teaching teachers. Like you're teaching math, but you're also teaching teachers right now. When people, when these kids you teach, I don't care if they're in, in second grade or in 12th grade, a bunch of them are going to join our, our country's, you know, the world's largest profession, which is teachers. And right now you're not just teaching them math, you're teaching them how to teach, which is super interesting. Uh, it's a very generational thing. Um, and so that, that just, that matters a lot. And I, I, I taught using the images that I learned when I was learning math about how to teach math. And um, for me, it took seeing other images of what's possible, other ways of teaching being modeled to me, um, being a part of that and, um, and yeah, playing around. People need an, uh, an imagination for change as uh, Steve Lyman says. And uh, that's, that's uh, what we'd love to help people uh, offer to people. And yeah, lots of folks, as, lot, as, many way, as many teachers as there are out there, there are that many ways to be a good teacher. I think we'd all agree about, with that while also saying that there are certain kinds of ways of teaching that we love and hold very dear here at Desmos. So folks, uh, yeah, that that, comp, that question from Heaven Era really got him going. Um, yeah, just checking the comments here. Yeah, we got Laura asking uh, for learning how to use a randomizer to create like a random set of equations or random scatter plots. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Heaven Ear offers some uh, some extra clarification here about uh, this person and, and yeah, like how you how you are introduced to mathematics. Um, it's serious. Um, it's precise. These all these all affect our, the images that we uh, offer students later on. So, uh, folks are offering you some love for your Twitter replies, Jay. We uh, I always appreciate how I can tag you into any question about computation layer and say, "Paging, Mr. Shao Math. I don't want I don't want to, and I don't know how to deal with this question." And Jay is always there. Um, Hawaii time, Pacific time, Eastern time, Atlantic time, whatever time, he's always online. So. 
Folks, let's wrap it up there. 4.30, the first time we've come in on time uh, in a long time. So let's just uh, let's own that right now. Always a treat to be here with you folks. And I hope you'll, uh, we'll see you again um, in a week with something new, something fun, something mathy, something Desmos. Take care, folks. Have a great weekend.